What is going on everybody? Welcome to the seventh part of our uh, supercomputer out of Raspberry Pi's tutorial series. In the last video we made copies of our SD card of our master node, so now we've got a second node that is an identical copy of the first, and now we need to do a few more things. So the next thing that we're going to want to uh, go ahead and do is log into both uh, Pi's. So first, uh, I'm going to log into the master node, which for me is 192.168.0.20, as we already know. Open that one up. Here it is. Log in as pi and my password. I think I mistyped it. Cool. Now we have the second pi. And again, uh, you can either plug it in and log in for sure and then do ifconfig. But you can also pretty much go ahead and guess what this pi's uh, IP address is. So my 192.168.0. And my previous one was 20, so I'm just going to say this is 21, and that should probably work. Hit enter. Uh, you might get this potential security breach, um, probably because I've already done this. You might not actually get this. I'm going to hit yes. That's fine. Because um, I've logged into this IP address before at, like uh, via SSH, and now it's a different uh, different machine. So anyway, just, just in case um, one of you guys gets that as well. So pi... Again, it's going to be the same password as the first, right? Even though this is the first time we're using the second Pi, um, we made a direct copy, so that included the user files and all that. And this one also has all the files that we just uh, worked on before. And again, you won't have to do like the sudo make and the make install and all that stuff that took four years. So now, what do we do? Well, I'm going to go ahead and adjust both of these windows so they're uh, fully uh, sized. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so uh, I've got them all set up. Good sized window. And now, again, this is the master node. As you can see, this is 168.20. So this is the first Pi you've ever used. This is your true master node Pi. Now, what we need to do is we want to add um, some RSA that allows us to quickly log into all of our Pis instead of having to like eventually need to log in. Like, say you had 64 of these bad boys. You wouldn't want to have to always log into every single one of them. That would really suck every time you had to turn on or off, or well, every time you had to turn on your supercomputer. So, the first thing that we want to do is generate a uh, SSS, SSH key. So, do SSH dash keygen, and then dash T. Dash T stands for type. So, what type of uh, key are we looking for? Well, we're looking for an RSA key. And then dash capital C, which denotes a comment. So what kind of you know note would we like to make about this? Well, this is our master node, which in our master node is really raspberry pi at raspberry pi. So this is our master node, and really it's mostly pi at raspberry pi, but anyway. Um, so that's our comment, and what we'll go ahead and do is we'll hit enter wait for it. Uh, where would we like to save this key? We're just going to save it in um, in the default directory. That's fine. And now it's asking us if we want a passphrase. You can put in a passphrase if you'd like. Uh, sometimes this causes trouble for me down the road, so I'm not even going to enter one, but feel free to enter one if you would like. I'm just going to literally hit enter to not enter one. Good. And then here's your random art, so now everybody can hack me anyways because there's my RS. <laughs> My RSA keys random art for everybody. Cool. So, <laughs> next up, uh, what we're going to do is we want to share this with our, our next Pi. So, in theory, if you put a password, it would share the same password um, to use SSH amongst each other. Uh, but obviously, we did not use a password. Um, so, what we can do, though, is once you've done the above, is the next thing that we can enter here is cat and then that the squiggly or the squiggly means slash home slash pi again squiggly and we want this to go in dot uh, ssh slash id underscore rsi rsa dot pub i don't even know bar ssh and then pi at and this is where you enter the IP address of your other Raspberry Pi. So 192.168.0. And this one, again, this my master node is 0 0.20. So that means my second node, as we confirmed, at least for myself when I logged in, was just 21. Just one more. So that's where 
uh, what you'll have to put in there. So obviously yours might not be 21, probably isn't. Then what do we want to do? Well, we want to go ahead and um, make dir dot ssh and then cat. I don't know, forward arrow, forward arrow. I don't know what you're supposed to call this. Somebody knows what you call. This is probably a bar, but I don't know what these two forward arrows actually mean. Anyway, forward arrow, forward arrow, space dot SSH slash authorized keys. Okay, hit enter. Hopefully that works. Are you sure you want to con continue connecting? So it's kind of like when you connected to SSH. Yes. Permanently added. So now you have to enter the, uh, the password to your other Pi, which since you made a copy of your master node is going to be the same as your master node. So enter that. And you should be all set. So now what we've done is actually created uh, a file here on the other Pi. So for example, if we, if we switch over to the other Pi, Click here and here. So now this is my other pi, pi at 192.168.0.21. And we want to list out uh, even the hidden files of the path ssh. Hit enter. You'll have some stuff here. Originally, uh, this didn't even exist. So it would have thrown an error before. So if you're getting an error, something went wrong. Probably you had maybe the wrong IP or something like that. But I think you would have found that out sooner. Um, so that's pretty much it to tying your pies together so you won't have to log in to every single one of them. So that's going to conclude the sixth video now. In the next video, what we're going to go ahead and do is set everything up so we can actually calculate pi using both of the pies, pi on the pie. And uh, so there's a few steps there. Doing it initially is not too hard, but then we want to actually change some of the names around and all kinds of other fun stuff. So anyways, that's what you have to look forward to in the next video is really your first example of building a two-node supercomputer. Um, so that is very exciting. So anyways, stay tuned for the next video. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and the subscriptions. And until next time.